Hey guys, it's Louis again with Metatron Garage and um, today I wanted to talk about uh, my latest build. Um, it's a Yamaha XSR700 and today we're going to go over what I did to my bike and why I think it's probably easily mm, the best um, the best starter new or it's a good new build let's put it that way um, it's a super cheap bike that has a super cool uh, frame and design to begin with um, and parts are easily accessible um, and um, we'll talk about it why I think this is probably the funnest and inexpensive um, build a first build or you know like me um, I've done countless build but um, the last bike I did it was an old bike and challenged the crap out of me um, this time I felt like something easy so sometimes even for um, a veteran builder like me um, and you know I don't want to overdo it here I'm still learning lots of stuff but um, I just think it's a freaking great build it's quick and it's it's uh, the end result is really rewarding so uh, let's look at what I did um, to my bike and um, and look at all the parts and uh, I'll have links for all the parts as well in the description I right, choose all right guys so the main reason I think this is a super great idea for a build um, a, a base for a build is this bike like I said earlier, already looks pretty cool stock, bone stock, you know, it's, uh, but it also has a lot of flaws, um, you know, when you pick it up and, and to me that's really appealing when I look at a bike and I'm like, oh, look at how many things that they did wrong, like, oh, there's a juicy amount of stuff to do on this build, I really want to do this build. Um, so right off the bat there's just so much stuff that you're like oh yeah I gotta do this and then I gotta do that and you're really excited about the, the build you know just looking at the stock bike <clears throat> when it's brand spanking new but that's one of the two things but the, the, the other thing is this thing is so freaking cheap it's really affordable uh, I picked this one up it was uh, <clears throat> 2018 I bought it at the end of 2019 so you know the bike has been sitting at the shop for two years so they gave me a sick deal on it. I'm here. I'm, I'm here in Canada, in Canadian price. Um, the bike usually retailed for nine grand, uh, plus levy and all the crap, hidden fees that you have with um, ordering from from shops. But um, uh, I got it for seven k um, Canadian, and I was out the door for eight grand with all the with all the levies and the, 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 all the other fees so god you know that's a really good price for a brand new bike uh, and then you know with that it gives you the option of buying a lot of aftermarket parts which i really like that idea um, the other bike i really wanted to build was the the bmw scrambler it's been my dream bike for a few years but i've never picked one up because the bike's perfect i mean god you know, even the freaking pipes are perfect. Like it comes with Akropovich, you know, dual pipe. They're beautiful. They sound amazing. Like it has, the only thing you can do on, that, on a BMW Scrambler is you do the tail tidy and maybe you get one of those fancy, you know, taco for it. Um, but uh, it needs nothing and it's super expensive. So you're $19,000 out the door, you know, and it's like, all right, so that, there's not, that's no fun. There's no fun in buying a bike, to me, personally, you know, that I'm going to pick up for an extremely high price and uh, I'm not going to get to spend any time personalizing it, making it my own. So I thought that the 700 was a way better idea um, for that reason, because after buying, let's say, for me, you know, I probably spent five or six grand in aftermarket parts, <coughs> the bike... So it's at 12 or 13k Canadian and it looks just badass and very unique you'll never see another one of these around I really highly doubt that there's there was one uh, another one that's like this in Canada even so 
Um, let's go over some of the stuff I've done. Um, the biggest thing for me is when GBB Moto <clears throat> out in Europe um, said they were uh, offering a kit for this bike. And when I saw that they're offering a kit, I was like, oh, I just got to do this build. I mean, seriously, this is just... I've been wanting to do one of their builds for a long time. Um, I wanted to do the SR500. Um, I wanted to do the Triumph Scrambler build. And um, I never end up, ended up doing them. But when I saw that they offered a kit for, for the XSR, I was like, woo, yep, I'm in. So the coolest thing, one of the coolest thing about the XSR is the whole back end on bolts. Uh, you got two bolts right here, another couple here, four bolts, and this whole back end that, you know, used to go all the way past the wheel, way past the wheel. You don't even have to cut it out. The, the, Yamaha made it so that you can mod this bike. So to me, that was a no-brainer. I just had to do it. And um, so I got their, their seat kit um, and uh, the fender kit, which, it, you know, you have to paint it. You have to paint it, you have to, you know, glue that light in there and, and uh, so there's a bit of paint to do, you know, you're not going to take a grinder to this thing, but uh, definitely you have to paint all their parts, which is kind of cool. I mean, you, you want to make it, that it matches your bike. Um, you can get these little blinkers from them too, because um, it comes with these, Yamaha yeah, still put the, these disgusting, like from the 80s, I swear they haven't changed them since the 80s, absolutely ridiculous. But um, you can't believe these big ass freaking lights, like, are you kidding me? So just ugh, get that out, off the bike right away. Uh, and then, you know, hopefully it's bright enough. I haven't ridden it yet. I just finished building it. But I hope that, you know, sometimes with LEDs, uh, you'll have the person behind you saying, you know, I didn't, I didn't see you break at all. Um, I don't think that's going to be the problem. A problem with that, that light is pretty bright. But... Um, you never know, so we'll, we'll find out about that. Uh, these blinkers, are, I trust these, I've had these. They're, um, they're extremely bright for LEDs, and uh, so those are definitely a, a go, even though they're, uh, they're a dark tint. Um, so that was the back end. Kind of not the best to bolt on. Um, it's finicky, and now the key doesn't work anymore. So you can't just like pop your pop your seat like it used to be is these finicky bolts underneath here and they're just freaking pain in the ass I never want to take this thing out ever again let's put it that way uh, <clears throat> right here first question people are gonna ask me what are the, these tires the they're the TKC 80s for from Continental excuse my French here uh, these ones are like I went in with the stock size and it's still beefy as fuck so they look absolutely freaking sick. Got them on the front too. Um, I went with stock uh, size two because GBB wouldn't tell me if I could go up, and I'm uh, glad I didn't. It's with the fender; it's really flush. So, with their fender, I would stay with stock for the for the TKCs. Um, all right, I'm just gonna move on from the back here. Um, I usually use Zards in my builds. Uh, but Zard, I couldn't check out their stupid site, and I, they weren't helpful this time. And everybody's using SC for their builds, so I thought, what the heck, I'm gonna use an SC this time. So, um, really happy with it. It looks super sick. Uh, it's beautiful. The welds, as they say about uh, these SC, the welds are gorgeous, and the, the material they use is really nice too. I'm used to the Zard material, and this uh, SC is. It doesn't disappoint. So, and <clears throat> my only thing is that it's not nearly as loud as a Zard, and that could be a good thing for some people. If you're in a neighborhood, you know, with your neighbors just hating you, this is a good kind of mid, mid, mid noise. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy with it overall. I'm I'm happy that I'm not going to be as loud as I usually am too. So, uh, that's fine with me. Um, here they had a little kit. They had a GVB had a they had a panel that like you 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 buy it. And it's um um it, it's not plastic. It's uh, God. Anyway, I, I don't know why I don't remember the what material it's in, but um, it's in fiberglass. Sorry, fiberglass, and it covers that. And mainly because it covers this, it's absolutely hideous. I'm gonna 
I'm gonna do something about this eventually, but for now, I, I like these panels with the holes so much that I couldn't, I couldn't buy that, that panel. Like, I think, to me, this is like one of the highlights of the bike, even though it's plastic, you know, it's a nice color, and I think they did a great job. Uh, Yamaha, it's one of the coolest things they did. I just wish they extended it here. If they would have been smart, they would have extended past here, but oh well, you know, um, they did so many things wrong with that bike. Can't expect them to do anything right here either. Um, and GVB also had a panel, a fiberglass panel, because I think the idea is to remove all the plastic and just go fiberglass, but um, uh, I didn't get it either because I freaking love this. This is really nice. Like, why would I change this? Why would I spend 500 bucks? On changing that when that's just fine like nobody's gonna know if it's fiberglass or plastic anyway so I didn't go with that either um, I put some bobbins on this one crash bobbins my girlfriend has had them on her scrambler Ducati scrambler for years and they all grinded the shit because she's dropped the bike so many times <clears throat> the bike has not ever got any damage whatsoever from all the times she dropped the bikes I mean I'm you know I don't want to say she dropped it like 15 times but you know, she dropped it on cement a couple times and on dirt a couple times, and uh, those are super cool. And I think this bike is so agile that I think I'm gonna do a little bit of rodeo stuff with it, like wheelies and some burnouts, uh, and some crazy, crazier stuff than I usually do. So that's why I went with those Evo Techs. I went and put some on the back too this time, because might as well, and I put some on the front too of the forks, because might as well. Uh, people really complain about uh, this right here, the, I think in the new model they fixed it, it's black, uh, but, but on the, the 20, um, 2018 it was silver, and it was just weird. So painted that, the whole rad, some people take the whole rad out and paint it black. I think it's a great idea. I didn't want, really want to go through the hassle of doing that this time. I, like I said, I kind of wanted to go easy, an easy build, so I just covered it with this uh, really cool Evo Tech um, uh, cover here, a uh, rad cover, and super nice, super cool. The, the, the usual quality that you're expecting from Evo Tech. Uh, and it's honeycomb, uh, sucker for honeycombs. Um, as you can see, I have lots of honeycomb tattooed on my body, so I'm a sucker for that. Um, <clears throat> the forks was the GVB kit again. Uh, the forks are kind of skinny, they're like skinny and silver. The bikes just look weak. Um, so that was definitely needed to be addressed. Those guys knew that. So they, they, they send you these uh, unpainted aluminum machine covers here and they send you this, these beefy freaking covers uh, for the fork here and just the whole front end just comes to life. Just looks badass now. And um, also from them, got the uh, front fender, which is a shortened front fender. It's a beautiful kit. The, the way they, they did it, it really works great. Like they, uh, they, everything just matches. And uh, yeah, it's just bolt on easy, like Ikea style. Like they even have instructions for you to how to do it. Like for real, this is builder's dream. Like, you know, <laughs> very easy. Uh, for the headlight, I didn't go with GVB. I kind of regret it. The idea was that I wanted, um, I wanted a, I, ha I had bought a, a taller screen for it because um, I kind of wanted a screen sometimes and I just figured oh, I'll just be swap swapping between the short screen and the tall screen but I went with the Koso uh, naked headlight so there's no housing right it's kind of flatty it's a very small little flat piece even though it's the same size as most headlights um, the Koso just it, it's it's sm it looks small and with the big uh, tall uh, dart uh, uh, windscreen it just looked like shit so I don't know I'm still debating him whether I should have gone with the um, GVB the GVB they makes like it's just it was a bit too retro for me like their headlight it's like these old-school headlights and um, I wanted something modern and I thought the coastal would be cool I think the coastal would still be cool if I didn't want a windscreen uh, wind windscreen can be so nice sometimes you know um, I don't know, I rode it with the high windscreen and I thought it was just so comfortable that, I don't know. Yeah, it was a toss up. I think it's a bit of a weird mix. Sometimes I wish I went with, you know, uh, just the housing. Um, uh, at Brogue, you can get all that at Brogue. I'll, I'll have a link in the description. But uh, yeah, with, uh, with a Brogue housing and a, and a black 
LED light, I think it, with the windscreen would be a way better match. Um, but um, hey, it's, it's not bad, you know? The Coastal is definitely a cool light. If you don't put a windscreen, it just looks so cool. Uh, and again, that was pretty easy to install. I had to, I had to actually cut something here. Oh no. Um, and then front flashers, um, they're the, uh, I think they're, they're motodemic, I think. They're just high quality little flashers. Super fucking bright. Ooh, my eyes. Um, yeah, those, so those are, are great. And the whole assembly was from Brogue. Um, the whole assembly for the light was super nice. Brogue has a lot of cool stuff. I mean, it's definitely your number one destination. Um, change the bars. The bars are really weird. The, the angle of the bar is just, just awful. I don't know what they're thinking. It's really close and it just didn't give you that kind of stretch that you want. So I went, I usually I always go with uh, uh, the Pro Taper Wingham. Wind them, and it's like a mid rise, and uh, I love those bars the second time I use them. Um, and um, <clears throat> the reason I didn't change, like this, uh, the, um, I didn't change this part right here. God, I don't know why I'm having blanks, but um, uh, it, it, I don't like the way it curves back towards you. I, I'd much rather have a straight one, but Brogue made this adapter to move the taco up here instead of having it uh, down here this is weird so um oh no it was in the center right here it was just sitting right in the center towards you just awkward anyway so they have that that bracket and it, it mounts um on the stock uh, riser here so i didn't want to change that because i i like that idea of mounting it on uh, on the stock uh, stuck mount here so i didn't change that but you know it would be cooler if i had the straight straight riser um for these i got uh, the levers i just get them on ebay for on the cheap because there's no point on spending like 250 bucks machine parts when you can get them for freaking 10 bucks or 20 bucks on ebay so i cheap out on those i don't care i think they look great in black they're way better than stock so you know why not uh the mirror uh, Moto Gadget just started making mirrors. That's really exciting. Finally, a freaking quality mirror that's just, look, it's tough. I can barely move it. Um, it's about time that someone does that because, uh, look, and it's, uh, it's frameless too. Look at how cool that is. I just, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, thank you for making those. I'm, I'm so stoked that, and I'll have a link for, for that part as well. And it, it, finally, thank you for making those mirrors. All right, moving on. Um, oh, these, I don't know if you guys run these, but um, this is um, a quad lock uh, mount for your phone, and it comes with a case too. And they recently uh, made this really cool kit. It's got a little charger, and underneath it is a USB. So you run a little short, short like four inch USB cable to your phone, and it's wired. Uh, you know, with most wires that come on the bike, this one co like comes right there. So it's so easy. It took me like five minutes to install that, and now my phone can charge right on the hands uh, the handlebar. So that's a really cool mod. Um, <clears throat> the the tank, okay, the tank is cheesy as fuck on this bike. Like, who wants a plastic tank that comes in three or four parts? Like that was like just you know, definitely like, am I gonna do this? Can I can I can I do this? Okay, I'll do it, but goddamn, the, the only reason I did it is because it's, it's, got, it's a brushed aluminum panel and it looks freaking rad. I love brushed aluminum, I'm a sucker for it. So, you know, I went for it, but, uh, and you got your metal tank underneath, you know, it's cheesy. I much rather, uh, I much, I like the way that the, uh, the Ducati Scrambler did it way better um, with their, their nice uh, metal tank, which we painted on ours. Uh, a couple times, and it's cool, you can change the color. You can paint these too, but damn, it's so cheesy. But anyway, so I couldn't deal with that plastic part in the middle. I still had a really hard time with it. So I got the, um, the Urban Legend uh, uh, kind of leather cover here with the bag that I already had. And now I kind of like, I can deal. You know, I don't see the plastic as much. I, I see mostly aluminum and leather. So now I'm happy with that, you know. But yeah, definitely, I know a lot of people that are like, wouldn't buy this bike just because, because you know, uh, it's not a metal tank. It's it's kind of a bummer, you know. And there's a bit of plastic, so for most builders, it's a no-go. Uh, all the Harley guys are puking in their mouth right now. 
Um, I think that's it. I mean, I do a, I'm doing a performance upgrade, uh, and so now that's got the pipe uh, and uh, the, the fuel, uh, the um, the air filter, um, <clears throat> so that the whole thing comes to life with the new pipe and it opens opens it up. Uh, Brogue has also sold me uh, that performance upgrade, I believe, um, and it's just you know it's a little sensor that goes in your airbox. So you have to drill a hole. Oh no, very very hard very hard build. Um, I think that wraps it up for this build. I mean, that, that was pretty much all I did. You know, I, there's a lot of parts removal, obviously, but um, overall, um, as far as parts that I bought, <clears throat> pretty sure that's it. You know, it's a very easy build. So that wraps up the XSR 700 build. Uh, it was really easy, it was really, really fun. If you don't have a lot of time, if you know, if you just want to go out in the garage on a Saturday, afternoon have a beer and just not struggle just enjoy your time in the garage and and not scratch your head oh my god how am i gonna fix this so oh, i can't go riding tomorrow my buddies are going riding and i'm out in the garage fixing my bike this is not one of those bikes it runs so smooth the power delivery is absolutely and insanely good it's it's an overlooked bike i think the performance is amazing it sits at um Exactly the same spec as the Ducati Scrambler, actually. It's uh, 380 pounds and uh, it, it produces 72 horsepower, um, which is, it's a light package, you know. So, um, this one is it's water-cooled uh, and the Ducati Scrambler is air-cooled, but they both come up with the same weight and the same power delivery. This one is a baby, maybe a bit peppier off the line. Seems like I'm smoking my girlfriend when I just get going. But um, it's a great bike, very nimble. Uh, it feels, just feels really good. Um, uh, I think it's overlooked. It's performance, you know, it's, it's on par with, with, with its brothers the, and the XSR 900. XSR 900, you can pull a wheelie in every single gear. Uh, this one won't do that. I was kind of expecting that I could do that. Maybe I, could, I can now that I did the pipes. Um, but um, right off the bat, with the stock, I only rode it stock this summer a bit. It's, it wasn't as fast as I thought. I couldn't pull a wheelie on third gear, this, you know. So, yeah, if you, wanna, if you want a bike that does that, then get the 900. But then, I don't know anyone that makes a kit for the 900. Uh, not a kit that's fun. JVB Moto makes a kit for the 900, which is pretty rad, but it's, it's very modern. And I just, I, I wanted to keep it a bit, a bit of a retro bike. And the brushed aluminum is what sold me. Uh, the brushed aluminum thing is freaking cool. I think they're both great bikes um, and uh, they're super fun build. So if anyone wants to do an easy build and have a super unique bike, then um, this is your, this is the one to, to do. So hope you guys enjoyed the video um, and well, stay tuned because this one was done in very, very quick <laughs> amount of time. So I'm going to be doing another one soon. Uh, cheers guys.